Welcome to Life on Board Amy Jo. Behind us you can see the Anderton boat lift which we came down yesterday. Yes and that's what this vlog's all about. Um, we left our mooring on the Trenton Mersey Canal yesterday and we actually took a lift and we're now moored on the visitors moorings just below the lift on the River Weaver and that'll be another vlog so uh, enjoy the cruise with us today and uh, have a look to see what happened yesterday. Left early this morning about nine o'clock and we've made it down to Saltersford Tunnel. It's now quarter past ten. Uh, we're not allowed to enter the portal until half past ten. So we've got about a 15 minute wait now and then we can go in. One boat, two boats have already come out. So we're just waiting now to make sure nobody else is in the tunnel. Now going through the second tunnel and final tunnel. The last tunnel, Barton Tunnel was the last one we've just come through. We're now doing the run in towards Anderton Lift. Uh, we're a couple of hours early, so we may end up having to uh, find a mooring, sit for an hour and wait because we're not due onto the staging area until quarter to one. No, tell her like quarter past one, sorry. Uh, and then we can move up and go down the lift. So we've got a little bit of time to kill, so we've decided we'll come to the little cafe restaurant and have a piece of cake and a cup of tea, and that's the lift itself. We will come in from this end, across the ramp, into the caissons, and then go down. Just moved up now to the staging area at the allotted time, quarter past. Uh, we have to wait here now until quarter two, two, and then we can start moving off around to the lift itself. The Anderton boat lift is a two case and lift lock near the village of Anderton in Cheshire, in the northwest of England. It provides a 50 foot or 15.2 meter vertical link between two navigable waterways, the River Weaver and the Trenton Mersey Canal. Built in 1875, the boat lift was in use for over a hundred years until it was closed in 1983 due to corrosion. Restoration started in 2001 and the boat lift was reopened then in 2002. The lift and associated visitor centre and exhibition are operated now by the Canal and River Trust. And it's only one of two working boat lifts in the United Kingdom, the other being the Falkirk Wheel in Scotland. That's us. Heading on to the lift now. This will be the marshalling ramp. I'm going to moor up on the left side and wait for the lockies instructions, but we're uh, just coming on now. So the back gates are now closed to uh, protect the canal from the lift if anything goes wrong. The lockies now going to open the other gate, just in front of the boat. Down there uh, and let us into the caisson which is the actual lift itself. Down there is our destination. I'm no longer used as uh, in the old steam days they used to power the cables to raise and lower the caissons. Nowadays it's all done by hydraulics. So now we're just heading into the caissons themselves proper. That's the marshalling ramp dealt with. We're now on the caissons themselves of the lift. Just waiting for the doors to be lowered to seal the casing. That's all the redundant lift gear up the top there. No longer used. Loads of gears in the old days. Here comes the uh, seal coming down. It's a bit tight in the, in the chamber apparently. So we're uh, we have to come back a little bit in a minute. Go. 
our length, we've had to go in diagonally in the casing because uh, our bow button is uh, catching the front. Uh, yeah, the bow button's catching the front seal. Chris is trying to do a cowboy trick and lasso the mooring pin to keep us in place. So there we are. On the lift proper now. I wonder how the seal is kept between the back gate and the channel. You'll notice there's a gap in between the two halves and the, um, the water's pumped out of that middle section or drained out of that middle section and that in turn makes the seal. The pressure of water on the outside of the, the dam forces it to seal. It's lift. There are two casings, bathtubs if you want to call them that. We're in the one at the top and just over there down at ground level is the second one. And as we go down the second one will come up and we'll pass each other halfway. Each of the two wrought iron casings were 75 feet long by 15 foot 6 inches wide and were 9 foot 6 inches deep. Each could accommodate two 72 foot narrowboats or one large barge with a beam of up to 13 feet. Each casing weighed 90 tonnes and when empty and 252 tonnes when full of water. Because of displacement the weight is the same with or without boats in them. Each casing was supported by a single hydraulic ram consisting of a hollow 50 foot long cast iron vertical piston with a diameter of 3 feet buried in a 50 foot long cast iron vertical cylinder with a diameter of 5 feet 6 inches. At river level the casing sat on a water filled sandstone lined chamber. Above the ground the superstructure consisted of 7 hollow cast iron columns. Each provided guide rails for the casings and supported an upper working platform, walkways and access staircase. At the upper level the boat lift was connected to the Trenton Mersey Canal by a 165 foot long wrought iron aqueduct with vertible, vertical wrought iron gates at either end. So that's it, we're on our way down now, very slowly, as you can see. It's extremely smooth, There's no bumping, no rattling or anything, just a nice slow gentle drop. Loads of gongooslers down below, of course. Everybody wants to watch a boat going down the lift. And the pipework there is where they drain the seal between the two boards um, to keep the seal on the canal. We're about a third the way down now. Todd's law says that when you're in the middle of something, your battery runs out on the phone. But there you go, we're back in, to, back in here. There's the other casing going up. It's actually got two boats in it, and uh, one boat came out of uh, Liverpool with us. So 
so uh, they've been down onto the weaver. So we're now almost down at ground level. And as you can see, it's an awful long way up there. Up there is where we came from. We dropped all the way down through here. Very nearly at the bottom now. In fact, that's it, we're down. Level with the river weaver, just through the gates there. And our friends up there are going to join the Trent Mersey where we've just come from. Now for the pressure to equalise on the uh, gate in front of us. And then he'll raise the gate, we can start the engine and we can exit the lift. In normal operation, the cylinders of the hydraulic rams were connected by a 5 inch diameter pipe that allowed water to pass between them thus lowering the heavier caisson and raising the lighter one. To make adjustments at the start and end of a lift, either cylinder could be operated independently, powered by an accumulator or pressure vessel at the top of the lift structure, which was kept primed by a 10 horsepower or 7.5 kilowatt steam engine. If necessary, the steam engine and accumulator could operate either hydraulic ram independently to raise the caissons. Although in this mode, it took about 30 minutes to raise the caisson, as to pose to three minutes in normal operation. Unfortunately, using water as a hydraulic fluid, over the years, corrosion mounted up on the lift, and during the 1990s, British Waterways carried out a preliminary investigations and found that the lift was too uh, corroded to continue, and uh, it was closed down. A seven million restoration cost saw the lift completely restored but using a, a hydraulic oil for the hydraulic operation instead of water. The restoration commenced in 2000 and the lift was reopened to boat traffic in March 2002. In the first summer season, the lift saw over 100,000 visitors, 800 boats passing through and 16,000 taking a ride on the trip boat. It took a little while for the pressure to equalise, but now uh, the gate's going up. Once the gate's up, we can then come out the loft, out the lift. That's the first seal opened. Hopefully now the gate will start to rise. It's taken a while for them to get the pressure equalised. Away it goes. So now this is unsealing the caisson that we're in to the river. And once we get the go ahead from the locky, we can start the engine and motor out. Looks like I'm going to get another shower. Two showers in one day. Bargain. That's the seal open. Given the go ahead by the locky, we can now leave the lock. Another boat getting ready to come in as we go out. Entering the River Weaver, making a tight left turn because the current's got us a little bit. Uh, the, there's 
the lift that we've just come down. And now we're gonna make ourselves along the river and there's some visitor moorings just down below, just round the corner out of sight, and we're gonna pick one of those up. And there's the sideways view from below the, the lift. So our first mooring on the River Weaver, on the visitors moorings just below the lift. Down that way takes you to Runcorn, Marsh Farm Lock, out onto the Ship Canal and beyond to Manchester. There's the big salt works which is still inactive. And that way down to Northwich and the flash at the end. <laughs> 